Hi, welcome to Top Shelf Takes, the only show on the internet that is made up of complete fact and no opinion whatsoever. Today we're going to be talking about the best cartoon villains of all time. So I'm so excited to talk about today's topic. Um, first of all, we want to talk, we have two guests today. Hi, my name is Katie. I am friends with Demi and Tim, and I'm snazzed to be here. <laughs> it's snazzed to have you. Hi, it's me. I'm Demi. Hi, uh, Demi. Hey, Demi. <laughs> I'm Dylan. I'm not always. I'm Tommy. <laughs> All right, guys, I can't wait to get started. Best cartoon villains. Before we get started, though, we do have a new function to the show that I could not be more thrilled to be sharing with you. Um, so for the first time ever, Top Shelf Takes is going to be featuring someone in the role of the judge. This will be an unbiased opinion that will hear all the arguments, time them, and then make a final selection for our famous Top Shelf Takes top six list as displayed up here. So uh, I'm going to be making all the decisions. I will be playing the role of the judge for the, uh, for the first time. Uh, don't worry, I will keep it fair. The facts will be concrete and you will not be able to dispute my rule ever again, internet after this. So this will be the official top six list of all time. You know, without further ado, Let's get into it. You got a 30 second open it, opening and then we're gonna have a three minute debate and I'll make my final ruling. Absolutely, Don't Tim. Uh, I know I know you just said it's gonna be, you gotta obviously keep it fair as a judge, but I have a pick that is very near and dear to your heart. I know. He is making the return to top shelf takes at my number six. I have Ernie the giant chicken from Family Guy. As if you've seen the previous Top Shelf takes, he appeared on uh, Famous Cartoon Birds, and I thought he deserves another shot on this one as well. He is absolutely a villain, as we've talked, as we said in the previous episode. Um, every time him and Peter fight, it is continuously the longest um, continuous fight. That's in fine, in villain. Oh! <laughs> I, 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 gonna, it's gonna be quick. All right. Wham, wham, wham. Wham. Let's <laughs> off it. And I turn? Whenever you're ready. Now, this is going to be a very niche answer. But it is 11 year olds and the codename code name kids next door. Those little bastards Ooh, ruined that show. And I remember one episode, and I don't remember ever watching it again after it. So I'm blaming them. Solid argument, Tommy. We'll call that time. Good work. All right, let's head over to Katie, the newcomer, stepping up. All right. Uh, let's hear your number six whenever you're ready. All right, so my number six pick, as all of my picks will be based on is how much they scared me as a child. So my number six pick is the villain from Monster House, which you may think is the woman who fell down and died in the house and made the house scary. No, it is society. They bullied a fat woman into dying, and that they will just, ugh. She should be mad. She should be making the house a monster. Her spirit is correct, and that's the scariest part about it. I yield my time. <laughs> that was brilliant. My number six spot is going to Lemon Grab from Adventure. <laughs> yes! Who brings up the question, how responsible are our heroes for making the villains into who they are? Okay, Princess Bubblegum made him that way. No one likes him because he's probably a Virgo. He's a little loud, a little obnoxious a little bit too strict with the rules, but let me tell you, it's not even his fault. It brings up an ethical dilemma. He's a, a bet. I just love him. Okay, that's it. I yield my time. That was exactly 30 seconds, so you're in luck. All right, so <laughs> everyone, we're going to open this up to a maximum three-minute debate, and I say this. Convince me. I'd like to start by saying the fact that you think that Lemon Grab is a Virgo and not an Aries is slander. <laughs> Okay, but he cares. Okay, this is not a, a, the point. He is like very strict about like Dylan, the moon. <laughs> I've never seen. Ernie the Giant Chicken could beat up on the eleven-year-olds, quite frankly, for starters. And how can you not love the continuous fight every time? There's some of the best little side bits from Family Guy. I'm sorry, Demi, I interrupted you. <laughs> okay, I was just gonna say I've never seen Family Guy or uh, whatever Tommy was talking about. So I don't, I don't know how to argue against your people. 
but you know who Ernie the Giant Chicken is. I genuinely don't. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest. No, no, absolutely not. That that giant is chicken really man does not hold a candle. <laughs> I don't know. First of all, Peter's the hero, the villain of that story. He yeah. is an anti-hero if I've ever heard one. So all the chicken is doing is its best. So I can't take that as um, a, a comparable villain. The eleven-year-old's great choice, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. A society that we exist within being the villain of the story, I think that's a good villain to have on screen represented. It's a great my next picture's gonna be hatred. Oh my god. I, my only argument against I love the society of the choice, Katie. My only argument is that it's cartoon villains and it's not technically animated because it's a concept. So I don't know. Ooh. The angry mob was absolutely animated. <laughs> that's fair. Okay. <laughs> I just, I don't know how to argue against yeah. society in general. Like, that's, you can pick apart Ernie the Giant Chicken, as we have. And, but like, how, what do you, what argument do you have against? I go there, like, the whole, technically, is society, is society a cartoon villain? That's kind of, that, that's what you got to ponder here, if you were, if you were the judge. <laughs> I was almost going to pick the Monster House. Uh, but I thought that you and Dylan came at each other for a pretty nice volley there. I heard enough against each other, and I didn't hear enough against uh, Lemon Ticket? Lemon Grab. Lemon Grab. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry, I don't watch Adventure Time. I actually heard a very good argument for Lemon Grab, and the only argument I, ha I heard against him was that he was the wrong sign that Demi described, <laughs> which I don't think is valid in determining who the victor of this list should be. So with that, I'm going to give the number six spot to Lemon Grab, uh, Demi's pick. Fantastic Woo! work. Let's head Katie, over. Let's head over to number five. And Demi, you're gonna go first for this one. My number five pick is Dr. Heinz Doofenshmirtz from Phineas and Ferb. We love a villain who knows his limits. This boss is going for a, an achievable goal, just the tri-state area to start. He just wants that tri-state area. He is unstoppable okay talk about motivation everything he does has a tragic childhood backstory that he goes into he has like the most determination of any character he gets defeated by perry every single day but he wakes up the next morning and he starts all Time. over again i said what i need to say that is how you do an opening <laughs> argument with a 30 <laughs> second all right, my number five slot goes to Ursula from The Little Mermaid. Who among us has not had a nightmare about this woman in our dreams? Me, you, 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 and you. We have all Bye. had a nightmare about her, which means that she has the most convincing character design as far as scare factor goes of any uh, any Disney villain, in my opinion. She is also based off of uh, some really cool references, which I respect. She also is a shape-shifting sea witch who shows people their value by taking away, giving them what they want, but taking away the thing that makes them special. She also is a shapeshifter, decides to be a fat sea witch Fine. all the time. Very positive. <laughs> My number five can easily be number one, but I am going with Azula, because if there's pure evil, it exists in the heart, and you see no redeeming factors in her. She'd kick a puppy. Is that, Is that your you? argument? That's it. <laughs> All right, great. I love it. Short and sweet. My number five, may I start with a question? You have a group of turtles that grow up in the sewer and have absolute crazy ninja powers. And what do you need to stop them? You need a full suit of armor, samurai in the shredder. He builds his own army strictly to terrorize the TMNT turtles. And that's all I have now. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Guys, some strong picks. Here. Hot. Well, I'm... first of all, Dylan didn't even pick the best version of Shredder. You could have I... easily said Super Shredder. I, they're all the same character. You I... didn't know there was a Super Shredder too right now. And I'm going to just, I'm going to come at you and Demi a little bit. Your picks deserve to be higher. Give them the credit they deserve, people. Uh, I agree. Well, Azula hasn't hit puberty. I, I agree so that Azula, Azula should be much Azula higher on the list. Azula should be way higher on this list, Tom. You yeah. have to respect her with the five spot. I 
will gladly see Doofenshmirtz higher higher on this list, but in my list, he makes number five, and I think that's good for him. I will now go to Katie and say Ursula is not on my list only because I trusted her to be on your list. So I will <laughs> say Ursula is going to be on the list too. These picks are all good to me. I would have never thought of Ursula. I've never seen Little Mermaid. You've never seen well, Little Mermaid? What's wrong with sir, you? Sir, you are missing out. And I have to say, Ursula, she's very scary. I think that she's a pretty scary Disney villain. She has but, eyebrows up to here. She's rocking it, drag queen style, which I respect, but at the same time, very jarring to children. Very good character design for a villain. I mean, if you want to talk about scary, my that's man, Shredder. That's like really Mom. scary. I don't think Shredder's scary at all. No. I'm gonna put that out there. I think that man, I think he is a not scary oh, villain for a not scary that? TV show. And like, they are turtles living in a sewer, sir. I don't think that you need to do much to terrorize they them. Give her in their shells at just the mere thought. Of Shredder. He doesn't even always have to do it himself. He just sends out his army that he's congregated. You know how much time, money, and effort that man has got to put into trade all of these. I, this isn't the best businessmen of cartoons. This is the best <laughs> villains. Not only that, they <laughs> run in their shells once in that entire series. Super Schmerz gets Who's his butt problem? handed to him every episode by a platypus. And he I don't. Uh, and he's you know what? He's got a badass theme song. Come at me. Which one of your villains has a badass theme song? He gets the I'm Diligence like, Award. I respect that. But Diligence is not a villain make. <laughs> I mean, we, have we ever really fought a platypus? How, we have no idea. Platypus is super not Kick him. He's a third of the yeah. size of him. His little brittle German bones can't even like defeat a tiny little mammal. Like, he's what's happening here? He's not a complete monster. He cares enough about Perry to not defeat him. He loves their relationship. They are lost without each other. But they dare really I say that's less villainy. villainy. Shredder, Listen. Shredder would love to kill the turtles, and I'm sure eat right out of their shells if he had the opportunity to. Thank yeah, you. and then his work as a villain. That makes, that makes Doofus work do less villain. Who did Tommy say? Oh, he said Azula. Okay. Uh, I was like just trying to see the way. I think we can agree that Azula like is Azula much is higher on the list. All. Yes. Azula's yeah. the strongest, and to the point where like it's a disrespectful move to put her at number five. Yeah. Well, my number four is more personal. That's cool. We're not at that number. Can't wait. Right. <laughs> Fun. Okay. I have no problem telling you I'm between two right now. Ursula was running away with this fight for most of it, but you made a sidestep, Katie. Uh, Demi pointed out that uh, Doofenshmirtz has his own theme song. What other villain has their own theme song? You oh. failed to say Poor Unfortunate Souls, which is a bop. Now, <laughs> your argument... <laughs> Now, your argument was very solid, and I'm really, I am about to give it to you, but I also really liked the Doofenshmirtz argument, and it's a battle between these two. My apologies to Azula and Shredder. Shredder, I heard a million things against, and I feel that he was fairly taken out. Uh, Azula, yeah, she's flying up this list. Don't worry. Uh, so, uh, I'm gonna give it to Ursula, despite the, fi the, the fatal flaw there. Ladies and gentlemen, let's just go right back around and talk about Dr. Doofenshmirtz, all right? After everything that Demi has just said, let me just top it off. The determination, as Demi pointed out, insane. He has one of the most tragic childhood backstories in cartoon history, and he just takes all that and builds off it. And he builds and just continues to grow, and he sure might have had issues taking over the tri-state area. You try fighting a secret agent platypus. I'm sure it can't possibly be that easy. Every single day this man wakes up and builds an invader. Have All you right. been able to kill an Oh. What makes a villain is that it attacks you where you feel you're safe. That flying pizza from Jimmy Neutron still terrorizes me. Oh my god. <laughs> Walking around a dark room I expect to be eaten by a slice of pie. That is complete terror in, dare I say, a villain. <laughs> Time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Number four? <laughs> All right, save it. You <laughs> like fly pizza save over it. Azula? Right? Save the disrespect. Save it. Katie. My number four is the Lich from Adventure Time. In a show symbolizing how terrifying and confusing the world can seem while growing up, the Lich is literally the fear and chaos of the unknown that we all uh, have as children. He's an element of pure destruction, which I would say would be a deficit because he does not have a strong moral code. He is pure chaos. However, the fact that on Cartoon Network, they were able to put him in literally a skin suit of Finn's childhood hero's flesh. 
and they got away with that. That's some scary shit, man. And I just think that he has one of the most interesting and scary character oh. designs. Again, I'm back to scary. Sorry. <laughs> My number four pick is Shigo from Kim Possible. Okay, some might argue that she's a sidekick to Dr. Draken, but I think we all know who the real boss in that duo is, okay? She is an actual match for KP, so much so that we often worry for her safety, okay? That's a good villain. It's interesting to watch. Um, what else do I have? Uh, yeah, you got to give her props for putting up with Draken's BS because you know it would take a lot for her not to kill him every single day. And we all, I think we can all kind of agree she was someone's sexual waitress. Time. I think we can all agree that we're knocking the pizza right the fuck out of here. Oh, oh my I'm God. sorry. Oh, right the heck out of here. I like gets, totally gets ass kicked me. by a platypus. You know how you beat a platypus? Look, you shut. punch it in the face a hundred times. Tommy, I, have you ever I appreciate the platypus. He has trained for this. And the pizza, you just eat the pizza. Like, well, obviously, why the pizza eats you? Huh? And then your villain, your childhood terror is just gone. You just well, eat. Tommy, I appreciate the You're pull. You're afraid of birds. I appreciate the pull for the pizza, but as a number four slot, are you kidding me? That and is like, number six at six? best. Are you serious? You can't put it up that high and expect it to get on this list. Like, let's mm -hmm. knock that right out of oh, here. You deserve internet hate for this pick. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I will send the internet my address. All right, I love Shigo. I'll be honest, she's amazing. I do not know if she has like the raw like power, like the cosmic power that the other two picks do. I don't know if she's quite as intelligent as Doofenshmirtz, and I don't know if she's quite as like cosmically powerful in a chaotic way as the Lich. She's a little too human for me. Look, I totally get that. I wanted her on my list, but compared to these two, like in the same spot, I don't think she can hold a candle. So I will gladly bow Shigo out and go harder for Dr. Kingsburg. <laughs> Let's go. We want Heinz at number four. You cannot, you <laughs> cannot talk about the all time cartoon supervillains and leave off Dr. Doofenshmirtz. I'm Watch just saying. Well, that is the most valuable crime is Tommy putting a pizza on the list, honestly. On a, on a person. You're putting a dude who's gonna get beat up by an 11 year old on the list. Okay. Oh, but like, if we're, hold on. Oh, you got me. Here, so, on a personal note, and to show Pines' stretch as a villain, my dad used to watch Phineas and Ferb without me and my sister in the room just to see what he was up to that day. Because he did something new every day. So every he, day, that man he wakes up with a plan. Watching a he knows what he wants. Just to see what he's, he's doing. The so lich wakes up and chooses violence. And also, if this was a fist fight, he would fucking Thanos snap <laughs> this man right out of existence. Yep. He would, not even a blip on the radar. Are you the kidding lich, me? But you know what else trying to do that? The lich is absolutely is terrifying, but he has no real motivation other than chaos, and I cannot get behind it. Doofenshmirtz, yeah, Doofenshmirtz has been a self-motivator since day one, quite frankly. When neither of his parents showed up for his birth, we can, can't even imagine what that must have been like for him. And not that's, only that- That's drama! It's unbelievable. And not and yeah, he might get beat up by a platypus, and sure, he might favor the platypus sometimes, but at the end of the day, this man wakes up every single day with the same goal, unwavering, constantly, and does everything he can in his power to achieve- Five seconds. That. But hear me out, flag pizza. <laughs> Time! I don't want to skate over Tommy's childhood demons, okay? Because I don't want to just, like, not acknowledge that. So, Tommy, I respect the pick, but it's pretty clear that one goes out pretty early. Look, I feel the lick probably would have had it in a lot of scenarios but we doubled down on Doofenshmirtz. And not only did we not uh, double down, because you can fight one to two if you convince me enough, but you backed down on one of the arguments that they made. And so I felt we had a little team up here for Doofenshmirtz and the inclusion of Heinz, which was very nice. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna give it to uh, Dr. Doofenshmirtz for the number four spot. Yay! Woo! I respect that pick, I respect that. Okay, my number three pick is Hades from Hercules, the Disney movie. Okay, we love a villain who dreams big, otherwise we get subpar plots. He's going for the world. We're talking the whole deal. And he's got an exact planetary alignment to get it done. He is hilarious. We love his sassiness. He's spitting truth left and right. Um, he's got his awesome flamey hair deal going on. Um, and his whole realm is just like beautifully animated, but that's besides the point. Uh, he like, oh shoot. 
time. That's okay. I'll fight harder in the, in the debate. It was respectful. All right, Katie? All right, we're going to have to get one thing clear real quick. Stop motion animation is animation and therefore can count. The Beldam, also known as Other Mother from Coraline, I think has one of the most evocative designs, as well as being one of the scariest. It plays on, she plays on the fear of blindness. She plays on the fear of, like, you know, that thing, that creepy crawly in your house. She's basically a giant spider made out of scissor parts. And also, if we're talking about villains, we got to talk about henchmen. She has an army of demons and mice at her disposal at all times. It takes a very hard time villain to organize like that. Sometimes the best villain is not even deep or anything to it. But they have one thing that can terrorize you. And Dennis from the SpongeBob movie, with that spiky ass boot. There was no coming back from that thing. But they did come back from it. That's a size 14 right up your candy ass. But they did come back. That's from it. If you want to talk about a villain that is not only iconic as much as he is chaotic, there is one name you need to know. And that is the Joker. He crosses multiple platforms of villainry, including the animated version. And not only that, his one purpose besides chaos is destroying the bat. I will save my arguments for the next round. The Joker is by far not the strongest. As far as the animated series goes, not the strongest Batman villain. You have Harley Quinn, you have Poison Ivy, you have Catwoman. Why would you not choose one of these absolute queens of destruction over basically like the most like just boring, I'm going to put it out there, kind of boring villain? I mean, he does, he inspires other people around him to rally to his cause. He doesn't even like build or make an army. He brings people to the table because for whatever reason, they buy into what he's selling. He's but the Joker up. episodes are no good without Harley Quinn. So, oh. that's the best part of the episode. I obviously can't speak to this one. I've only seen the, the Batman animated movie where it was voiced by Mark Hamill, so... It's a good choice. That's also a good one. That's a good version of Batman. I, be I uh, believe Dylan's referring to the Mark Hamill one, just to be clear. I am referring to the Mark Hamill Joker. Oh, okay. He's. I mean, you get points for him being voiced by Mark Hamill, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> And those do not count as villain points. Those are just cool guy points. Cool guy points, yeah. Speaking of cool guy points, Hades is a super cool guy who, uh, talk about henchmen, he's got pain and panic on his side who are hilarious. If you want a villain who's um, compelling to watch, I would watch Hades because he's got the most quotable lines in the whole Hercules movie. Okay, how many times growing up did you say, let's get ready to rumble? Or was that just me? It might have just been me. I'm going to be honest, <laughs> never. <laughs> yeah, it might have just been me. But, uh, <laughs> so iconic. How many times do you, like, I like the fact that when he gets angry, his hair explodes, let rent free in my head, okay? Like, it's insane. And we love a villain who can make us laugh. You don't root for him to win, but you love watching him try. Well, what if we got stepped on by a really big cleat? <laughs> <laughs> you can, Sorry, I'm just going to go back to what I said before. Your, your, claim, your claim of unavoidable, they they did, they avoided it. They got <laughs> like, he, in no. the long run, other than like some fear and like a little like side tactic. What does Dennis like really do? Also, he got defeated by David Hasselhoff. Like, I think you should uh, automatically David get points off by that one. David Hasselhoff everyone. <laughs> No, 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 no. Uh, that sex sex one, one. Oh, cannot destroy everyone. everyone. <laughs> like, I, no, no, no. I don't think so. And I also think that uh, he loses a lot of points for that. <laughs> that the cameo role, the human cameo is the one who defeats him. He doesn't even, he's not even hero material. SpongeBob doesn't even get to give the pilot a blow. Because he's dead, they don't, SpongeBob doesn't even. Um, there's a third movie coming out. We don't know that. We, we do know that. Us. He's definitely it's defeated. Okay. The Bell Dam, like, she's terrifying. She's really, really scary. If we were talking about cartoons, we cannot include just one type of animation. For example, if we someone said Hans from Frozen, that is a 3D animation style, which is different than the cell-drawn cartoons that we have referenced previously. Just because the method of animation is different should not disqualify my pick. And also the Beldam is so scary that I do think that she should qualify even though she's not the animation style we are originally considering. Time. 
All right, guys. Sorry. N normally, we'd hit back at that a little bit, but that round went pretty long. Uh, it's very easy. And I want to point this out. Uh, the Joker is my favorite of these characters, but my unbiased judge pick thinks Dylan was knocked down and accepted it pretty early on. Dennis, I actually liked your argument a lot, Tommy. My problem is... Thank you. I, 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 <laughs> in, another, in another round, I would have given it to you. I just heard zero against both Hades and Beldam. I heard zero against both of them. Uh, I'm going to make an executive decision here. Coraline's going to take the day just because I love Hades to death, but I liked Kate. I mean, I love Hades to death. Katie's argument about the animation did convince me. So I'm going to give yeah, it on that. That's principle. fair. That's fair. Thank you. Hades is a fantastic villain pick, Debbie. This is like up there for my Disney villains. I completely forgot about him actually. And he probably would have been on my list if I had remembered. I need, we, we got We got to put some respect back on uh, this name right here because Azula is a bad <laughs> ass bitch people listed up she not only kicks zuko around this entire time she gets handed the fire nation by the end she stays evil this entire time there's plenty of plot points for several other characters we have talked about like they stray a little bit away from it no she sticks to her guns she sticks to it black heart like tommy pointed out the only good argument tommy made but azula absolutely one uh, my number two pick to continue the theme of my list to be a good villain, you need to just be a bad person. And that is absolutely Adam Sandler's character in Eight Crazy Nights. Just for the fact that in a obviously like instantly freezing environment, he covered someone with feces and laughed and walked away. You know who does that? A villain. Time. I'm doubling down, Dylan. Azula deserves this number two slot. She is exactly a beautiful foil to both our, our favorite character, Zuko, and our other favorite character, Katara, for different reasons. She's an incredibly complicated character. She has complicated motivations, but she also has a strong moral code that she sticks to. She is exactly what happens when you abuse a child so hard that they break. Um, she, even though she is, I also believe that she is so strong, she would win at an Agni Kai against every single character on that show, except for maybe Iroh. I yield my time to Demi. She has more arguments than I do. Time. Okay. Are you ready for mine? I'm ready. My oh. number two spot is Azula. Let's freaking go, okay? Yes, let's Agni go. Between, the Agni Kai between Azula and Zuko captivated me more than the battle between Aang and Ozai, okay? I stand by that. She is 14 in this, in this show. She's 14. She has, like, clear motivations. We love a villain who's not mean just for the sake of being mean or evil. She has her motivations. They are complicated, but she sticks to her moral code, like Katie says. She has trauma. She goes through a lot. She's just a child, and you you can Time! See all yeah. right, all right. You know what I'm calling this. It's, it's not even Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I can't believe that's great. Good for Azula. She deserves it. <laughs> We're down to the final spot. The number one best cartoon villain of all time. I foresee a battle of epic proportion. I'm coming in hot. My number one is Hans from Frozen. Thank you, Katie, for making that argument earlier because you paved the way for me. He, <laughs> you may go hot now because Frozen's gotten very, very popular, but remember how you felt when you first watch that scene, when he leans in to kiss Anna and save her frozen heart and goes, if only someone loved you. No one saw it coming. You cannot tell me you did. It hurts to even put him on this list because that's how much he sucks. I yield my time. Wow. Ooh. Solid. All right, to keep with our winning uh, universe, my number one pick is Zaheer from Legends of Korra. I think he's genuinely one of the best written, most subversively terrifying villains of the show. He plays on your expectations by being a villain who is an airbender and not an airbender who is abusing airbending. The best airbender on the show, better than Aang, better than any of Aang's descendants. He can fly. So the fact that he is so subversive and he also has such a strong moral code to the point where he will defeat other villains in the show for Korra because they challenge his moral code. I think that he is so well written and so terrifying. I'm, and My number one was the easily the easiest decision on this list. It is the only character I wish bodily harm on. And it is Lucy Van Pelt. I want Charlie Brown to kick her in the face so much. Can we kick him out of the game? 
Tell me. You got five seconds left. Do you have a why? Who sucks? Time. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think we need to show Tommy's list Tommy, to, to the viewers. We need we need that against yourself. It's ordered backward. <laughs> you started <laughs> off strong. <laughs> All right, all right, we're going to Dylan, okay? My number one, if you want to talk about villains with the motivation and just the drive to try to succeed, is Plankton. <laughs> I was waiting oh, for him. Come on, people. Plankton, one goal, the formula. He has files and files and his plans for how to do it. And honestly, at the end, don't forget, he succeeded. He not only got the formula, he took over Bikini Bottom, and very few people on our lists can actually say they succeeded. And Plankton was able to do so. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure any other villain on this list could have, uh, you know, succeeded if they're, the heroes that they're fighting had a combined IQ of higher than 10, okay? Yeah. Like, oh, 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 oh. I, I'm just gonna put that out there. Plankton would not have been squashed under the foot of any other villain on this list, and I'm gonna include the stupid pizza on that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I will say Hans, as much as, like, oh, he might, you might roll your eyes at him because it's frozen so big now. He plays with Anna's heart, and that's the most evil a person can be. He tricks her into thinking he loves her, wants to marry her, all while planning to murder her sister, and his playing with her heart also puts her life literally in danger. Her life and her status, because he will take her throne from her. So he, make, he causes her to fully freeze and become frozen, and if it wasn't for her sisterly bond, she would have died and been dead this whole time. And he's such a bad villain that they, like, she, he's now, like, the toxic ex-boyfriend, if you watch Frozen 2. Like, they, like, mock him because he's that, like, that gross of a human being. He's a villain. I do agree that Hans is a great Disney villain, but Disney can only do so much. They can only go so far in their narratives. So here's literally a fact. I'm, fascist. He I'm literally kills dozens of people. <laughs> like, I know that you broke one, but like this dude, this dude, he builds a team of the strongest vendors and they are all evil as heck. All I mean, so bad. Needed to be. Plankton gets it done himself and his wife, he didn't need anything. <laughs> My more. primary he's point still over. stands. Pri yeah. Plankton's barely a villain. Also, Plankton <laughs> has zero to work with comparatively to the rest of the people on this. He's literally, you, like you said, you can literally squash him and he just rises above all of it. All for evil. All Dare I say it's monster. easier to kill the pizza monster than Plankton? Yeah, you eat the pizza. We've talked about this. <laughs> so if it's that easy to beat him. Plankton can't even build a wife that likes him. Like, I don't know if he's successful in much in his life. But Hans has clear motivation. He wants a throne because he's got, he's like 13th in line for his own throne. It's very clear what he wants and why he wants it and how he's going to get it. And it's by killing at least one sister, if not both, which he is fully willing to do. I mean, Tommy, you need to provide one more point other than Lucy moving the football to qualify her. I think we can all agree Lucy's not in the running here. Can we? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> She's not even a villain. She, that children are just like that, okay? No. <laughs> I've worked with kids for six years. No kid sucks that much. You don't know Zaheer's motivation. His motivation is that he thinks that the world is skewed toward vendors, and he thinks that the concept of the Avatar is incredibly mm -hmm. elitist. So he, his whole motivation is to destroy the Avatar because he doesn't think that um, any one person should have that much power. The thing that makes him really interesting is that he has empathetic goals. You understand exactly what his logic is, and he's not the villain in his own story, and he's almost not the villain in yours if he didn't do so many cruel things to achieve his goals. Zaheer uh, is our number one cartoon <laughs> villain of all time. Well done. Our final score rests at Katie taking the day, con uh, continuing a tradition that our guests always take the win. But uh, it was my unbiased decision. She won me over by being a wonderful addition to this show. Great work. I uh, really couldn't ask for more in both of our lovely guests. Our final list stands as number six, Lemon Grab. Number five, Ursula. Number four, Dr. Doofenshmirtz. Number three, the Beldam or the Other Mother. Num number two, Azula. And number one, Zahir. 
Uh, thank you so much for watching Top Shelf Takes. I hope you had a great, as much of a great time as we did. Um, these are the final top six cartoon villains of all time. I'm sorry, there's no more disputing that ever again, internet, but we'd love to hear what you think nonetheless. Please put your favorite cartoon villains in the comments below. Uh, and remember to like and subscribe to Famous Secret Agent uh, for more video content like this. Yeah,